Welcome airplane designers to another open VSP tutorial from the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. This tutorial is dedicated to the modified tab on the wing dialog. And the modified tab is all the way over here to the right. Now keep in mind the version of open VSP we're talking about here in this tutorial is 3.20.1, which was the latest at the time that this recording was made. Let's do a quick overview of this modified tab. It has an airfoil selection section, so this is very similar to airfoil in blending, where you're modifying an airfoil, not a whole section. And if you'll remember, zero is the root, which is this airfoil here. And then as you go up in numbers, you go up in airfoils. There's one, and out here at the tip would be two. You can do some rudimentary modifications of an airfoil with this shift, rotate, and scale section. We'll come back to that in more detail here in a moment. You can modify the leading edge of an airfoil, and you can modify the trailing edge of an airfoil. Let's take a more detailed look at the shift, rotate, and scale section. These are all pretty easy and straightforward. Delta X with respect to the cord. This moves the X position of the airfoil forward and backward, forward being negative, backward being positive, and it does it as a percentage of the cord. So a value of one would be moving it a full cord length. Positive one would basically put the leading edge here, trailing edge about there. Negative one would put the trailing edge about there and leading edge about here. So let's go ahead and do that real quick and watch this as I move the slider. I'm gonna move it positive and you'll see it move back. So there's about a half and let's go on up to one. And of course you're not limited one, you could go even more. Let's go in the negative direction real quick. So you can see that the trailing edge is now where the leading edge used to be. And you might say, well, that's just changing the sweep. I've already got a way to change the sweep over here in section. Well, yes and no. When you do it in section, you're actually changing it for everything from that section on out also. For section, when you're changing the sweep, whatever the root of that section is, stays in the same position. The airfoil at the end of the section moves, plus any sections on out also move. Now their sweep doesn't change, but their position will change the same amount that the outboard airfoil of section changes. So it's not quite the same thing. So on modify, you're changing a specific airfoil, everything else stays the same. Now let's kind of put that back where it was so it's a little easier to see what's going on. Let me rotate this a little bit because the next thing we're going to look at is changing the Y position as a percentage of the cord. Now this is a little bit confusing because Y is typically lateral, left and right. But in this particular case, it's up and down. So it's a little bit confusing. But once again, you're changing it as a percentage of the cord. So let's go ahead and change the root. We'll start moving it up and down. So there you can see it go up. And now it's gone up one cord length. So let's kind of rotate that around so you can see. And just for grins, let's go up to the mid rib and change him too, just so you can see what that looks like. So we can take it down, we can take it up. And once again, you might say, well, that's just changing the dihedral. But it's the same issue with dihedral as it is with sweep. You're actually only changing the dihedral at that one root everything else stays the same. Whereas if you do it in section, you're actually changing that section's dihedral, but everything outboard also moves up and down. Let's put things back the way they were. I'll just open this saved airfoil again. All right, let's take a look at theta. So here's theta. Now let's modify that and watch what happens. Now we are on the root again. Now you can see it's rotating the airfoil about the leading edge. So that's what theta does. And that's in degrees this time. So it's one way you can do washout if you want to. But once again, if you do washout in the section, you're changing everything outboard also. Now scale is what you would think it is. It actually changes the scale of the airfoil, both the thickness and the cord. 
So let's go ahead and show that. So you can see it changed the cord, but it also changed the thickness. So we have now doubled the scale of the root. And the next one is shift leading edge. This one is a little bit odd. Let me uh, zoom in here a little bit. It's going to be kind of hard to describe this one. But keep in mind that on these lateral lines, let's say the 10th line in from the trailing edge and the 10th line in from the trailing edge out here, they're always connected together. Now let's shift the leading edge. What that does is it moves that leading edge line farther up on the upward side of the airfoil or down underneath. And what it does is it either expands these lines or contracts them depending on which way you go. But they're still connected to the same spot that they are on the other end of the section, which means you can get some odd connections here. So let me show you that. So keep an eye on what happens here on this leading edge as I moved shift leading edge. So let's go positive first. It's coming out on the top of that airfoil and now it's moving back. So you should be able to see that these lines are now contracting on top and they're expanding around the bottom and moving around. So you can see now this leading edge comes up and connects right up here. So I'm not quite certain what the utility is in this. Uh, maybe it's a way to make a propeller or something like that. But uh, it's a little odd feature and I've never found any use for it yet. Let's go ahead and put it back where it was. The leading edge section and trailing edge section are basically the same. They do the same thing except one just treats the leading edge and the other one just treats the trailing edge. Now in this section there are three subsections. There's cap, closure, and trim. Let's work on this trailing edge section. Let me zoom in a little bit, pan up. I'm going to concentrate on this outer edge rib. It's a little bit easier to see what's going on. Let's start with trimming first. And this is what I did on the UWS-1 ultralight airplane on the trailing edge of the elevator and rudder. I did some trimming so I would have a flat back edge, which was about 0.4% of the cord. Although I decided to go with a constant height on that cutoff edge, which turned out to be about a tenth of an inch. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's do the X version first. Now X here is going to be whatever units you have for your airplane wing and we're in feet right now. So what it's going to do is it's going to start cutting this airfoil back, cutting the edge off with whatever kind of trailing edge we have to find in this many feet. Let's say if we do one half, what it's going to do is cut off half a foot of the back edge of this airfoil. So from this point to where it used to be was half a foot. Now how thick this is will of course depend on the cord and thickness of your airfoil. So if we had a thinner airfoil, this wouldn't be as tall. That's pretty straightforward. The next one, which is the one I prefer, is to set the thickness. That way I know exactly how thick it's going to be. And in fact, what it did is it converted that half foot to whatever the thickness was. And then as soon as I selected thickness, it set that to uh, a tenth of a foot which is what I was going to show you. Let's go back to zero, get it back out. So this is unmodified. And let's go to, well, half of a tenth. So that's roughly half an inch of thickness. And again, these units are in feet. So let me go ahead and select that. So this is roughly half an inch tall, maybe just a little bit over that. Now that's what I did on the UWS-1 ultralight airplane. I just specified how thick I wanted this to be. Well, now that we have this trimmed, it'll be more interesting to do a cap. And that specifies what this is going to look like. Now, you'll see this is flat. And that's basically what we have here, a flat trailing edge. But we could do something like round. And now we have a rounded trailing edge. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. So now you can see we have a round trailing edge. Now, the length is 1 which basically means that it's the same radius all the way around. What you're really specifying is this length right here. So one means make this length the same as this length. So if we went up to two, set that. 
now you can see that this length has doubled. So that's what round does. You're basically creating an ellipse around here, very similar to an ellipse anyway. And we could also do offset. So let's play with that. I'll just slide the, do the slider here. So you can see it kind of skews it up and down. So that's kind of an odd shape, but certainly something that might be interested. Now this might be something that's useful for a leading edge where you're trying to create something like an airfoil. Let's say you want to add a little droop to an edge. This might be a good way to do that. So let's go ahead and do the offset a little more. So you can see that there's a little bit of curvature here. It's almost a droop leading edge. If this were rotated 180 degrees and was over on the leading edge, that's what it would look like. And let's look at a couple of others here. We have edge, which basically gives you a sharp trailing edge. Let's go ahead and get the offset back to zero, seeing what it looks like normally. Length means the same thing. That's this length here. And let's look at the last one, which is sharp. This one's a little more interesting. It's kind of a combination between round and edge because we have this strength value. Now, if you remember back when we were doing blending, we can use strength to change how strong or how much curvature there is. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's crank up the strength here. You can see what happens. And look in this area here. Let's start cranking it up. And you can see by cranking up the strength, the stronger we make this, the straighter this line is, or more tangent it is to this line back here. But notice this still comes to a point here. So there's curvature here, but it comes to a point. So it's not round. So it's common, so it's kind of a combination between round up in here and edge down here. And this could certainly be useful too. Let's kind of undo all this for the moment and let's go back to flat and let's turn off thickness for the moment. Now let's come back and look at closure. And the closure is a little bit odd. I think the thing to do is just to demonstrate it. Let's pick skew lower and then let's start cranking up this thickness. Now watch as we start increasing the thickness. You'll notice this top does not move. The lower becomes thicker. Let's do that again. So this thickness, again, is in whatever your units are. So let's crank it back up a little bit here. So there's a tenth. So that's a tenth of a foot right now. Now, keep in mind, let me zoom back out on this real quick. You are actually changing the airfoil with this closure. So let me go ahead and put it back to zero. So here is our airfoil that we had originally, that NACA airfoil. Let's go ahead and increase that thickness. We are changing the airfoil here. It's no longer that NACA airfoil, it's something else. So whenever you use this closure and do the skew, keep in mind you're actually changing that airfoil. And for grins, let's go ahead and do upper. So that's just the exact opposite. This bottom curve stays fixed but the upper one moves up. And of course you can do both. So it does both of them. The upper one goes up, lower one goes down. The middle stays in the middle, it doesn't move. Then you have extrapolate, which I haven't figured out what in the world extrapolate does yet. I'm guessing it does something in combination with these others. Now there's something else I wanna point out here, which is kind of aggravating, but understandable. These airfoils back here have not changed at all. They're still the same. So there's a point here and we had a thickness here. Let me get rid of that uh, edge. Let's go back to flat. So this is flat here. It gets narrower and narrower until you get to this section. Now it's kind of confusing. Let me go back up here. Pan up here. So this is the next airfoil in. So you can see that it's wide here and narrower until it gets to this airfoil here, which is the next section airfoil. This can be a little bit confusing. It's tried its best to interpolate between these two because you don't actually have anything specified in between. So it's doing its best to try to figure it out. Now this did something weird on the vertical stabilizer on a UWS-1 airplane, and I haven't quite yet figured out how to fix it. Let's go take a look at that. Well, here's the front view of the horizontal 
and vertical stabilizer. Let me zoom in here on the top of my vertical stabilizer. As you can see, we're, we're looking from the front, but you can see the back here. This distance from here to here is the trailing edge being cut off. It's flattened out. But you can see from this rib to this rib, it expands out a little bit. Now I've got the same width here and here, but in between OpenVSP interpolated that it wanted to expand it out a little bit. Now it's not as bad now as it used to be. It used to be much wider and I've worked a lot adding more ribs in here to control this. But just because the extreme sweep I have in this, let's take a look at that sweep. So you can see this extreme sweep that I have in here. So where I'm getting that strange bow is right in here. So this trailing edge modification isn't perfect. This extreme sweep that I have in here kind of messed up my trailing edge just a little bit. It's not horrible, but it's not exactly what I wanted. Well, that's it for this tutorial. I think you've got enough information to start playing around with that modify tab on the wing dialog. And you can have a little fun doing some trimming and modifying. One of the things I think you can do with this is to add control surfaces that are separate from the wing or from your stabilizers. You could actually have an airfoil for, let's say, an aileron, add that in, and then you would add a wing with a flat trailing edge, which would end right in front of the nose of the aileron. So I think that's what you could do with this modify, you know, cut off that trailing edge of the wing right in front of the aileron, and then putting your aileron right behind it. What I wish that it could do is down here on this cap for round, I wish that length could go negative. Right now you can only do positive, which makes it round out. I want it to round in so I could stick the nose of that aileron or control surface in there really close to that semicircle. I wish it could do that. That would actually be really beneficial for what I want to do so I can close off that gap a little bit and have better aerodynamics. Waving that cursor around didn't really do a good job. So let's look at this again. What I would like to be able to do for like a stabilizer or the front part of a wing is have the control surface back here. So this would be roughly where the nose of the control surface would be. And instead of having the circle come out like this, I want the circle to come in like this and then the nose of my control surface would come in where that circle is. So this would be better aerodynamically than having a flat like this and then having the nose be out here and having this big turbulent area right in here. So that's one change I would like to see it do. It's possible that it's just too difficult to do in the software. I'm not sure. Well that's it for this tutorial. We've really covered the major wing components for OpenVSP. The uh, things that we have left, some of these other dialogues that are common to other things, like the General tab and the XForm tab. Oh, I think in the next tutorial, we'll come up to the Sub tab. And that's how you add things like flaps and rudders and ailerons. And you can add a few other things like lines, rectangles, and ellipses. And we'll get to that in the next tutorial. See you later.